What is the primary difference between business continuity and disaster recovery? What is the aim of establishing a security policy framework? Welcome to Certification Terminal, your ultimate destination for all certifications. We are thrilled to have you here. Today, we're diving into another video of ISC Square's Cutting Edge Cybersecurity Certification Practice Exam Series. At Certification Terminal, we're committed to being your ultimate certification Q&A hub. We're here to support you on every step of your certification journey. If you find value in our content, don't forget to show your support. Hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and share this video with anyone who could benefit from it. Now, let's get started on your path to becoming a certified cybersecurity pro. Question number one. What are the elements of an incident response plan? Option A, risk assessment, business impact analysis, disaster recovery plan, business continuity plan. Option B, preparation, identification, containment, eradication, recovery, lessons learned. Option C, backup, firewall, antivirus, encryption, authentication. Option D, prevention, detection, reaction, correction, prevention. The correct answer is. Option B, preparation, identification, containment, eradication, recovery, lessons learned. An incident response plan is a structured set of procedures and guidelines designed to effectively and efficiently manage and respond to security incidents within an organization. It outlines the steps to be taken when a cybersecurity breach, data loss, or any other security incident occurs. The components of an incident response plan include preparation, identification, containment, eradication, recovery, and lessons learned. Question number two. Which of these options is not an OSI level three protocol? Option A, IP. Option B, ICMP. Option C, SNMP. Option D, IGMP. The correct answer is. Option C, SNMP. Among the options listed, SNMP, Simple Network Management Protocol, is not an OSI Level 3 protocol. SNMP operates at the application layer, Layer 7 of the OSI model, primarily used for network management and monitoring, while OSI Level 3 is associated with the network layer, where protocols like IP, Internet Protocol, ICMP, Internet Control Message Protocol, and IGMP, Internet Group Management Protocol, reside. Question number three. Bob is a cybersecurity analyst tasked with prioritizing risks. He decided to rank the risks based on their likelihood and potential impact but without assigning exact numerical values. Which type of risk analysis is he conducting? Option A, financial risk analysis. Option B, strategic risk analysis. Option C, quantitative risk analysis. Option D, qualitative risk analysis. The correct answer is. Option D, qualitative risk analysis. Qualitative risk analysis prioritizes risks by assessing their likelihood and potential impact through methods like ranking or categorization, avoiding the use of precise numerical values for risk assignment. Option, a financial risk analysis is incorrect. Financial risk analysis, a subset of quantitative risk analysis, concentrates on financial risks. However, the scenario lacks specification on financial risk focus or the utilization of numerical values. Option B. Strategic risk analysis is incorrect. Strategic risk analysis typically evaluates risks related to an organization's strategic objectives. Yet, the scenario doesn't specifically highlight strategic risks. Option C. Quantitative risk analysis is incorrect. Quantitative risk analysis entails assigning numerical values to assess risk's likelihood and impact, enabling statistical analysis. It's a more intricate and time-intensive process compared to qualitative risk analysis. Question number four. What does the concept of criticality signify? 
Option A, the need for security professionals to ensure the appropriate levels of availability are provided. Option B, the need for consultation with the involved business to ensure critical systems are identified and available. Option C, the importance an organization gives to data or an information system in performing its operations or achieving its mission. Option D, all of the above. The correct answer is. Option C, the importance an organization gives to data or an information system in performing its operations or achieving its mission. Criticality related to data and information systems involves recognizing the significance of specific data sets or components within an organization, guiding efforts to protect, manage, and recover them effectively to ensure the organization's integrity, compliance, and resilience in the face of potential threats or disruptions. Question number five. What is the initial step in the incident response process? Option A, analysis. Option B, recovery. Option C, identification. Option D, containment. The correct answer is. Option C, identification. The initial phase of the incident response process, incident identification, is pivotal in recognizing potential security breaches or anomalies within an organization's systems or networks. Option A, analysis is incorrect. Analysis involves a detailed examination and investigation of the incident to understand its nature, extent, and impact. Option B, recovery is incorrect. Recovery aims to restore affected systems, data, or services to their normal operational state after an incident. Option D, containment is incorrect. Containment involves preventing the spread or escalation of the identified incident to mitigate its impact on the organization. Please subscribe to our channel. Question number six. Can you provide an instance of a knowledge-based authentication method from the options below? Option A, iris scanning. Option B, fingerprint recognition. Option C, passwords. Option D, facial recognition. The correct answer is. Option C, passwords. Knowledge-based authentication relies on information known only to the user, exemplified by passwords, confidential combinations of characters shared solely between the user and the system to verify identity. Option A, iris scanning is incorrect. Similar to fingerprint recognition, iris scanning is a biometric authentication method dependent on physical attributes, not knowledge. Option B, fingerprint recognition is incorrect a form of biometric authentication, not reliant on knowledge, but rather on a user's physical attribute for identity verification. Option D, facial recognition is incorrect, another form of biometric authentication that uses the distinctive physical traits of a user's face, rather than information they know, for identity verification. Question number seven. What term describes the officially endorsed minimum level of security configuration documented by a standard or organization? Option A, authorization. Option B, access control. Option C, baseline. Option D, authentication. The correct answer is. Option C, baseline. A baseline defines the minimum security configurations or settings that are considered acceptable or standard for a system or environment. Option A, authorization is incorrect. Authorization determines what an authenticated entity is allowed to do or access based on their verified identity and the permissions assigned to them. Option B, access control is incorrect. Access control manages and restricts access to resources based on predefined policies ensuring that only authorized individuals or systems can interact with specific data, networks, or physical locations. Option D, authentication is incorrect. Authentication is the process of verifying the identity of a user, system, or entity trying to access resources or services. Question number eight. What is the aim of establishing a security policy framework? Option A, to provide a structured approach to developing security policies. Option B, to establish guidelines for secure software development. 
Option C, to ensure compliance with legal and regulatory requirements. Option D, to define roles and responsibilities of security personnel. The correct answer is Option A, to provide a structured approach to developing security policies. By establishing a structured security policy framework, organizations create a comprehensive, consistent, and adaptable approach to security management. This framework not only enhances the security posture but also fosters a culture of security awareness and compliance throughout the organization. Question number 9. What is the significance of consistently assessing and revising physical security measures? Option A, to keep up with advances in technology. Option B, to ensure they are still effective. Option C, to meet regulatory requirements. Option D, all of the above. The correct answer is. Option D, all of the above. By continually evaluating and updating physical security controls, organizations create a robust security infrastructure capable of adapting to changing circumstances and threats. This proactive approach significantly reduces vulnerabilities, safeguarding assets and mitigating potential security incidents. Regularly evaluating and updating physical security controls benefits ensures physical security measures remain effective against emerging risks. Updating surveillance systems to high-definition cameras or implementing biometric access controls improves the overall security posture. Regular evaluations help confirm that security measures align with the latest legal requirements. Failure to comply can result in penalties and compromise an organization's reputation. Ensuring these controls are up-to-date, minimizes the risk of asset loss or damage. Up-to-date controls decrease the likelihood of breaches that could result in theft, property damage, or other adverse events. Question number 10. What is the primary difference between business continuity and disaster recovery? Option A, business continuity focuses on technology recovery, while disaster recovery focuses on business process recovery. Option B, business continuity is proactive planning to prevent incidents, while disaster recovery is reactive planning after incidents occur. Option C, business continuity and disaster recovery are the same concepts, just with different names. Option D, business continuity focuses on restoring business processes, while disaster recovery focuses on data recovery. The correct answer is Option B, business continuity is proactive planning to prevent incidents, while disaster recovery is reactive planning after incidents occur. Business continuity and disaster recovery are both critical components of an organization's resilience strategy, yet they address different aspects of risk management. Business continuity is a proactive strategy aimed at ensuring an organization's essential functions continue during and after a disruptive incident. It involves risk identification, risk assessment and mitigation, preventive measures, continuous improvement. Disaster recovery, in contrast, is reactive and primarily concerned with restoring an organization's IT infrastructure and systems after a disaster or disruptive incident. Key points include in disaster recovery, system restoration, Recovery Time Objective, RTO, and Recovery Point Objective, RPO. Immediate Response Focused on IT Thank you for joining us today at Certification Terminal. We hope you found this video helpful on your journey towards becoming a certified cybersecurity expert. If you have any questions or topics you'd like us to cover in future videos, please let us know in the comments below. Your feedback is invaluable to us. Remember to hit that like button if you found this video informative, and don't forget to subscribe for more insightful content on certification exam preparations. Share this video with your colleagues and friends who might benefit from it. Together, we can build a strong community of certified professionals. 
Stay tuned for more updates, and until next time, keep learning and excelling in your certification endeavors. See you in the next video.